Hello and welcome everyone. Today we're going to be thinking about and looking into theories within organizational leadership. The first theory we're going to discuss today is contingency leadership theory. As it says on the screen, there's no prototype or ideal leader out there, if you think about it. And a leader's effectiveness is contingent upon how well the leader's style fits a particular situation. And there's several things going on here. The first is leader member relations. And that refers to the level of mutual trust, respect and confidence that the group has for its leader. If the group atmosphere is favorable and the leader is trusted, then the leader member relations are good. Otherwise, they can be classified as poor as demonstrated in the figure on this, on this slide. The second is task structure. And that refers to the extent to which the task requirements are clear and communicated effectively. When the tasks are clear, a leader control can increase. And when the tasks are vague, leader control decreases. The task structure in the figure here is either low or high. Position power is the third construct to consider within contingency leadership theory. It refers to the amount of legitimate power or authority to your position that others um, can be held accountable. Can you fire? Can you hire? Can you do all those sorts of things? All these three factors determine the overall favorableness of organizational situations. When leader member relations are good, the task structure is clear and position power is strong, the situation is defined as favorable, as you see on the left hand side of the figure. In contrast, um, situations are the least favorable when leadership member relations are poor, task structure is low, and the position power is weak, meaning leaders can't do much about their situations. They can't hire, they can't fire, they can't adjust. They don't have that control. Those situations are related in the middle are known as moderately favorable. And as it says on the bottom of the page, it's important to consider how to match a style to a particular situation. And that can be pretty complex from time to time. This is all about contingency leadership theory. As it says here, in summary, there are task motivated leaders who can be more effective when the situations are very favorable or very unfavorable. And relationship minded or motivated leaders will be effective in moderately favorable conditions. The next theory is situational leadership theory. And in this, the leadership style is also not fixed as leaders can change and adjust depending upon the situation. So if you look at the figure on the right hand side of the page, you can see four quadrants from S1 to S2, 3 and 4, as well as D1 through D4. So I'm going to briefly talk about this uh, leadership theory that's currently used in 318 out of all the Fortune 500 companies. Um, that are out there right now. So S1, the quadrant in the lower right-hand side on directing behaviors. This depicts a leadership style that's high directive and low supportive. It stresses how the job is to be accomplished, the importance of achieve, achieving the overall organizational goals and frequently monitoring that progress. So somebody stays on you in that way. The second is S2 is coaching. It depicts a leadership style that's highly directive and highly supportive at the same time emphasizing meeting organizational goals while also encouraging the supporting team collegially. Third, supporting behaviors in the top left-hand side. It shows a leadership style characterized to provide little task direction and little social support or feedback. Much of the control for the task is assigned to the group or individual. And finally, S4, the delegating behaviors quadrant. It represents a leadership style characterized by low directive and low supportive behaviors. This style's behavior task is assigned to a group or individual and works with the group to set the direction and then allows the group to carry on that particular task as they see fit. On the other hand, you'll see the D1 through D4 at the bottom of the figure. And this follows a developmental uh, continuum. D1 starts off where individuals have low competence, and low commitment. So let's say new teachers, for instance, who aren't well versed on policies and procedures, and they might not be confident or even competent in terms of being able to facilitate their classrooms. D2 are individuals who are somewhat competent, but low in commitment. Let's say a teacher who's lost some of their initial excitement and motivation 
as it may have worn off from perhaps a, a negative experience. D3 are individuals, uh, those who are moderately uh, high to high level in competence, and they may also uh, be somewhat lower on the overall commitment level. They might uh, be seen as having the skills to do the job, but require active and ongoing support to boost their willingness to continually invest the time and effort it takes to perform at their max. And finally, D4 are the individuals who are at the apex of their developmental scale. They have the confidence and competence to complete the task, and they exhibit a high level commitment to the task. Let's say a master teacher who continues to inspire younger teachers through their output, output, overall work ethic, and enthusiastic talk as well. The third theory we're going to talk about today is the path goal leadership theory. And it's heavily derived from expectancy theory, whereby one uh, who is uh, so one will be motivated if somebody thinks that they can perform their work successfully, if they believe their efforts will also result in a certain outcome, as in they're in control of that. And the overall purpose is to increase the worker effort, performance, and job satisfaction in each of these situations that we're going to talk about. So starting at, uh, if you look at the figure in the middle, talking about the leadership behaviors, the supportive oriented leaders are those viewed as respectful, caring, and approachable. And le these leaders take genuine interest in their workers' well-being and their working conditions that they live in. Second is the directive leaders instruct and monitor progress and time quality and expectations for how the task is to be accomplished. Then we have the achievement oriented leaders who express a high level of confidence in their workers as being competent and willing to meet expectations. And finally, the participative ones who have a high level of competence and cooperation uh, amongst their uh, workers and their, and their teams. Uh, those uh, tasks may be unclear at times, uh, and, and also the rewards aren't always linked to the appropriate goal at hand. And that person uh, typically clarifies the worker needs and goals as they progress through. And at the bottom of the page, it reminds us that the leader must match one's behavior to the team's motivational needs. And that's really the path goal leadership theory, is that we need to, uh, to be able to match those motivational needs to the nth degree. Um, depending upon the purpose at hand. Finally, we're going to look at transformative and transformational rather leadership theory. These are leaders who work with their followers to co-construct and to be able to push one another to higher levels of morale and motivation. Essentially, it's the opposite of a transactional leadership where it just happens for a particular time and reason and then we're done. This is ongoing in nature. This is something that builds over time as some people summarize it in the four I's, idealized influence, inspirational motivation, intellectual stimulation, and individualized consideration. This is truly trying to develop a challenging vision for your team, linking that vision with a strategy for achievement, developing a specific vision and then translating it into actions, expressing the confidence and optimism about that vision and its implementation by and with your team. And finally, accomplishing that vision through small plan successes, moving forward towards its full implementation. Some people say that three concepts really manifest and, and can summarize what transformational leadership is all about. It's about having a moral exemplar of the organizational's mission who epitomizes the goals. One who can articulate a vision and build awareness of this vision while attending to specific needs of the team members, as well as their motivations and their concerns. And in the process, you're building team capacity to new levels. Essentially, leadership theories frame our understanding of situations, help us explain what's happening within our organizations, enabling us to predict what might happen in the future, and also being able to inform us to be able to control or manipulate some variables in order to increase the likelihood of our success within our organizations. I hope that you found this video helpful. If you have, please like this video, subscribe to the channel, and learn more with us, Education for Today with Evan Ortley. Take care.